I'm Matthew Kingpin. With this video, I'm going to be giving you an introductory slash intermediate level guide to being a more effective first contact to the enemy team in CS2. This video will cover the basics of the overall goal of the entry fragger, accurate pre-aiming, good movement, and the most important aspect of being the one leading the charge, confidence, even in the face of having poor stats. Without further delay, we're going to break on through and take what's rightfully ours. They will do nothing to stop us. So what is the overall goal of being an effective entry? The goal of being the entry fragger is to create opportunities for your teammates to succeed. This is done by gathering information, creating space for your team, and if you're lucky, scoring a kill. Gathering information is as self-explanatory as the term suggests. Seeing a dude and letting your team know, hey, there's a dude there. Just don't actually say he's there, though. You're gonna make your team quite upset at you as they unfortunately are unable to read your mind. Call the actual position instead, please. Kevin. Creating space is all about having good movement or to be more specific, good entry pathing, which I'll cover later. That last point, however, scoring kills? That's where pre-aiming comes into play, killer. Let's get into it. Pre-aiming. It's the process of putting your crosshair directly on a position where an enemy will be before you even see them. That's the short version of it, but what goes into making powerful pre-aims and understanding why it's an important aspect of being an effective entry? Pre-aiming, also called crosshair placement, is developed primarily through a combination of building your game sense, which is a general understanding of where people tend to play and how they play, and having a disciplined crosshair, which is always proactively having your reticle set up for anywhere an enemy might be. The end goal of good pre-aiming is to have to move your crosshair as little as possible in order to make your shot hit. The less you have to adjust your crosshair, the more likely you're going to be able to blast the other dude away before they can do the same to you. Less mouse motion equals less ability to fail. That's the basic gist, but how do you get better at pre-aiming? Experience, babe. You gotta be willing to throw yourself into the meat grinder and lose a few times to someone sitting in a common spot before you can really know where those common spots are. Assuming you're not utilizing less mental acuity than a dolphin during your play, once you die to a popular angle enough times, you'll learn where to pre-aim your crosshair near that oh-so-deadly power position. Set up your reticle beforehand and shut down anyone who tries using those areas against you. Next, we're going to be moving on <laughs> to movement and how it helps entries go from cringe to cracked. So what goes into good movement? It's a lot more than just hitting WASD. It's akin to seeing your character as a chess piece in the larger game of CS rather than just as you yourself. Entry pathing, as I alluded to earlier, is one of the most effective tools of a good entry fragger, and it involves moving around a bomb site in a way that sets up your team for as many favorable fights as possible. As an entry, you are living bait. It is your job to be the most important thing in the world for the enemy team to shoot at so that your teammates can be the one to shut down the enemy while they are distracted. You can't permit yourself to be eaten too quickly or to allow the foe into a position where they still have an advantage, so picking the best way to run through a site is paramount to creating the most unfavorable situation for the enemy team as possible, while also not allowing yourself to be put down too quickly without your team being able to get some serious benefits from your sacrifice. Every map has different optimal paths to take through a site, but generally you want to be putting yourself in positions where the most common angles are cleared and enemies in those common angles are given more than just you to fight, as the pathing you follow and the space you create should allow your team to be nearby to play two or more on one against each enemy position. Not exposing yourself to too many angles at once is also key, as to not split your team's attention and trading capability across multiple different positions should your entry end in your untimely demise. Good entry pathing is a skill that takes many instances of trial and error to perfect, and sometimes even the best routes to take will still result in failure, but it's important to not allow yourself to become discouraged if your noble sacrifice doesn't result in a round win. In other words, it's about being confident. Most people know the basic definition of confidence, but how it applies to Counter-Strike is a bit more complex than a simple 14-word definition on Google can really summate. How does being sure of yourself apply in a Counter-Strike sense? Practice is ultimately the driving force behind confidence. The more time you put into a skill, the more comfortable you'll be at that skill. In addition though, it's about knowing to the very core of your being that what you are doing is the best thing you can do and that you'll carry it out to the best of your ability. I know this path is the best one I can take. I know this peak is the best peak I can make. I know that when I go in, it will help my team in their effort to win the round. 
you will fail many times, especially as someone whose role is predominantly about being the one who doesn't get to have the most glamorous stats or the most frag movies made about them. But a team without an entry, and especially a team without a self-assured entry, will never be able to get anything done on the T side. Someone has to bite the bullet, and if you're the entry frag, you gotta assertively bite that bullet. Ignore the scoreboard entirely if you have to. Focus on whether or not what you're doing is winning your team rounds. If you're making things easier for your team, you are doing your job, and then some. Now that I've said that, however, there's a huge caveat in having confidence. It's a trap that many, and I do mean many, players fall into, even at the highest level of play. A big thing to avoid when it comes to building your confidence is to make sure that you aren't also developing an ego alongside it. Ego is flat out the absolute worst possible trait of a Counter-Strike player that one can develop, and those who suffer from problems with ego will be mediocre teammates for the entirety of the time they play. I'd actually like to talk more about ego versus confidence in another full-length video. That's how important it is to make the distinction between the two and make sure you never fall into the latter category. To give the short version though, the difference between confidence and ego is that the former is all about focusing on yourself and your own work. I know I'll do a good job peeking this guy. I know I practiced my pathing the best I can. I know I'll help my team be successful in this match. The latter is all about how your skill compares to others. I know I'm better than this other team. I know I practiced more and deserve to win. My team should be glad to have me. The length of this section is for a reason. Confidence oftentimes can devolve into egotism. So it's important to make sure to stay humble alongside your confidence. Don't let assuredness become arrogance. Or to put it in more understandable terms, do not think that you're him. That's about all I have to say for this production. I know I might have gotten a little feisty towards the end there, and some of you might have even felt personally called out, but this video is ultimately entertainment and educational in purpose. Counter-Strike, as complex as it might seem on the surface, is actually something that can be understood with enough time, patience, commitment, and humility. That's part of the reason why a lot of people at the very top of the food chain when it comes to skill level will oftentimes tell you to just play. Because with enough time, you can actually make playing the game just as natural as breathing. Entrying is one of those aspects that too can be made into that autonomous of an action. And the point of this guide and the other tutorial style videos I've made is to help people get to that autonomous stage. Anyways, as always, please give me any and all feedback you have on this video and any other video I've made. It is all read and appreciated deeply. Go into the future, burn your dread, and that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Tactical, I ain't dropping you. Hey, nice hey, kills. Nice that was huge. Oh, oh nice, nice work, work boys. boys. Did he just start, start spinning, spinning on his own, on his own team? team? I couldn't I kill my teammates, my teammates that fast, that fast if, I if I tried. You lose pistols. GG. GG.